Good morning, Crypto Family. I am back with another update. I hope you guys are still bullish. Just because the market is down, that shouldn't tear you down. It should build you up. All right, 9 out of 10 central banks worldwide are exploring digital currencies driven by crypto market. And again, you know, I thought we were on a bear market. You know, I thought people are pulling out. And there are a lot of people pulling out of digital currency right now just because of the market. Now, again, I'm going to like to explain this to you guys one more time. This is not the stock market. Cryptocurrencies are not the stock market. They're not shares. Understand this. So they feel as, well, you know, let me just go ahead and sell and take my profits and buy back in, you know, at a better price, which is great. I mean, you can choose what you want to do. Again, these digital currencies are valuable. All right. So the Bank of International Settlements published a report last week titled Gaining Momentum. But again, we're in a bear market. <laughs> Results of the 2021 Bank of International Settlements survey on central bank digital currencies. The report is authored by the bank's senior economist, Anaki Kose, and financial market analyst, Lara Mati. The Bank International Settlement CBDC survey was conducted in autumn 2021 with the participation of 81 central banks. The report describes 9 out of 10 central banks are exploring central bank digital currencies, and more than half are now developing them or running concrete experiments. In particular, work on retail CBDCs has moved to more advanced stages. And again, noting that the year 2021 was characterized by the strong growth of the crypto asset and stable coin market, the report states, on average, Almost 6 out of 10 respondents central banks said that this growth has accelerated their work on CBDCs. Again, family, prices should not fool you, scare you, tear you down. It should build you up. You see, the exchanges are controlling the prices, not the developers, the exchanges. The exchanges are making the money, but at the same time, while they're taking their money, don't be scared. You are going to become a multi-billionaire. This has also spurred collaboration between central banks to monitor the implications of crypto assets and stable coins and to coordinate regulatory approaches to contain their risks to the financial system family. So again, central banks, 81 banks, 81 of them, they're already experimenting cryptocurrencies, CBDCs. As you know, we are a decentralized. We're decentralized. That crypto wallet that you hold is decentralized. We are in the DeFi world. So and another thing. Um, Warren Buffett. Now, it may be a lot of you that follow him. It may be some of you may take some of his advice. But you have to really be smart on the advices that you really do take from these whales. You see, the whales doesn't want you to become wealthy. Again, he was on a rant, and I believe he was on last week, saying that he wouldn't even buy Bitcoin for $25. The thing about it is he doesn't want you to buy any cryptocurrencies. And he wants, like, who wouldn't buy a Bitcoin at $25 a coin? Be honest. And he's throwing that out there to make you see it's all about your brain and how they control your brain. 
the certain things that they say to you to make you not want to buy that token. And Warren Buffett believes that he has so much power that whatever he says in the investment world, you should follow. I follow my own judgment. I follow my own beliefs. I don't believe what somebody else tell me. I have to do my due diligence. And you guys see right there at the prices. You guys see where it's at. 732. Yeti coin. We're up by 28%. Again, we were down 19% yesterday. We were down 19%. And let's look at the charts. Bitcoin is up 31,000, but it's still down 4% from a 24-hour average. Ethereum's up by 0.5% and so on. These prices are cheap, and I'm telling you guys right now, once it rockets, and no one do know the time that it will rocket, but it will rocket. But the same thing when I told you guys about GOPX, this is a blockchain currency, blockchain currency, stable growth. Yes, you see the prices on BitMart, but don't let that fool you. Again, by next month, we will be seeing a $500 a token. So stay tuned about that. And if you guys are interested, I will be doing a giveaway of a GOPX token. And that GOPX token will turn to $500. So sit back. I know you guys are probably driving to work, sipping on your coffee, or just now waking up. But I'm going to play this clip of Warren Buffett's granddaughter. And this is just going to expose his whole side of, I wouldn't buy Bitcoin at $25. I don't believe in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. It's a joke. His own, even his own granddaughter exposes him. And, you know, Warren Buffett made those comments. He's the Oracle of Omaha. He told shareholders at the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting that he wouldn't buy all the Bitcoin in the world for $25 because it isn't doing anything. But not all Buffetts are alike, we found out. His granddaughter, Nicole Buffett, is an avid NFT artist in this space. And luck, as luck would have it, she joined us now. Welcome, Nicole, to the show. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So yeah, we you know we were talking about um, your grandfather's comments and his outlook on Bitcoin early in the week, and you know it just caught everyone by surprise. I wonder what was your reaction when you heard his comments on Bitcoin. Well, I mean, it's not a surprise. I've been. It's it's really. <laughs> this has been kind of a, a position he's taken for many years, decades, really, on technology um, in general. You know, he's pretty old fashioned. He likes to keep it simple, and um, it's funny, actually. I just received my first email ever in my whole life from him about a month ago saying how happy he was that I was doing so well. So as as much as he may not be into Bitcoin and crypto, I think he's very happy that, that other people like myself and so many other artists are. Wow, so. that's really wonderful. Do you ever talk to him about NFTs and maybe, you know, get in his ear? Maybe he'll warm up to them eventually, the whole crypto we'll space? See. Yeah, I haven't I haven't really actually yet, but but that's coming. I'm I'm uh there's gonna be a perspective show in Omaha, an amazing innovative art space that I'm planning in the late fall. So uh definitely NFTs are are coming to Omaha. Nicole, how how would you explain an NFT to your grandfather? Um, you know, if he, he thinks Bitcoin is useless, um, I don't know what he would think the use of NFTs are, but like if you had to sit down to him and explain the value value proposition of an NFT, what would you say? Well, you know, I think that it's this is really kind of a conversation about the evolution of money and currency and the role that art plays in that um, new in this new economy. That's that's ex that's my experience of it, and that's the conversation I would like to have with him. Is that you know the conversation about what is an NFT is really um, expanding our view of currency, money, our, you know, our relationship to what we value, the impact of um, just the concept alone, and that kind of collective agreement of what 
um, value is and what what makes something valuable. So the, the blockchain technology, um, I think it's really it's just incredible because it's really a, it's a technology of, of of honesty and transparency, integrity. And I'm thank you for showing these are my spirit coins. This is my Genesis collection, and you know I'm calling these the currency of compassion. And I've you know really just from the very beginning was so struck by the ability that this space, the NFT space, crypto space, and the community has to create impact in our world with this new. Um, economy. So, so that's what I'd like to talk about with him. I'd like to talk about, um, just how he feels about expanding the whole idea of finance and economy in and of itself. So, so why NFTs? I, I, I mean, I understand, it, you know, you just explained what, that, but as, as an artist, why, why, you know, what got you into the NFTs in the first place? And what, why are you doing it in that medium as opposed to others? I mean, are there other mediums? that you would necessarily maybe work better with if you felt like, you know, like, like what, what made you gravitate towards it? So, so I'm a painter. And so all of my NFT work starts in the physical medium as in the way in the, from the source it actually is created from, which is in the physical world. Um, I, you know, work with paint on paper. I work with a wide range of, of mediums. So, you know, with my work, I always like attaching a physical piece to the to really pay homage to the full full scope of the value of what it actually is, where it comes from, um, kind of tracing it back to the origin outside of the digital realm. Um, but why an NFT and what got me into the NFT was really, this was like a gateway of connection and an ability to share my work really right in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and what's happened for me in the space is that, you know, translating my work into the digital uh, sphere has allowed me to open up just it's it's opened it up in new dimensions on so many different levels. Um, first of all, looking at the work on a screen, you know, you're basically looking at work through a light box. So you're illuminating the image. Um, you can move the image. You can layer the image. You can add music to the image. You can collaborate with other artists with the image. It's becoming like wildly dynamic through the form of the digital in the form of the digital, which prior to the NFT, um, didn't exist. So it's just been like incredible and exciting. Yeah. I, 